The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, at this time, we'd like to come to you. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, uh, well, they kind of tried to push it down, kind of pushed it up at the morning. Everybody decided to get all nasty and bearish and, of course, uh, push it down. Now we're well, still up about six points on the S&P cash. But, man, do people hate uh, a slightly higher market in the morning. And uh, for the most part, eh, we'll see what happens today. But uh, as we start the show, the volume is extremely low. We're only doing about 3.7 billion shares on the uh, on the uh, tape, uh, on the complete CBOE tape. Um, had some questions, so we'll talk about that right now. Um, the way that volumes actually put together is three tapes, tape A, tape B, and tape C. Now, tape A is the New York Stock Exchange, tape B is the American Stock Exchange, and tape C is the NASDAQ. But the way the volume is almost always universally reported, it's tape A and tape B, because most of the ETFs are on the uh, Amex. And so the volume that comes into that is on the top of the stock. Uh, and you can kind of separate them, let me put it that way. Anyway, uh, 1.75 uh, billion shares on the NYSE, as we talked, but uh, 780 million shares on the Amex. So about half of the volume uh, is ETFs from the NYSE. Now we get to uh, the NASDAQ is doing about 1.2 billion shares so far on the day. But uh, yeah, those all up, and which is what I normally talk about all day. And that is uh, 3.7. So the question is, uh, why are all these tapes going on? And <sighs> The stock market is, and all the uh, technology for it, is built upon on buildings that have built uh, that have burnt down before. And when you really look at it, this tape A, B, and C uh, goes back to about 1870 in the ticker tape. So I don't think anybody really knows exactly how a lot of these things get done. Uh, they just are, and they. It's always one Band-Aid on top of another for the stock market because they don't want to stop everything, and they can't leave it alone. So they'll stick a little Band-Aid on it, and that's it. Anyway, that's a little corner there of uh, that. So when we look at the uh, markets, we're up about six points on the S&P cash, 28.11. Uh, let me update this just to make sure I've got everything. Up 47 on the Dow, NASDAQ's up 17. Russell, 2,000, up almost 10 on uh, eh, at least a little hint of uh, better trade numbers. And I continue, well, we've got pricing for Lyft after the bell tonight. Uh, they keep running around saying that it's going to price out at about $80 a share. We'll see. Uh, they always say that, by the way. So you never really know until it actually hits the fan or gets withdrawn before it become a horrible embarrassment. Uh, but, uh, yeah, NASDAQ's up 18. Um, probably the big deal is the dollar out here. I think uh, dollars to donuts. Uh, everybody thought that the uh, dollar was coming back lower. Well, it surprised you. It's up 46 cents today. And that put a hurt in the get-along, which I always love that saying. Don't know exactly what it means. Uh, but the hurt in the get-along on gold down 21, 1.6%, 1 silver off 2%. Uh, under 15 bucks at 14.98. Platinum almost down 2%, 1.8% actually, uh, 8.46.50. Copper uh, actually up a little bit. And again, 
Um, industrial uh, part of the uh, market, probably really going to get going as soon as we see copper back above three bucks. Been hovering just down there, but it's up six tenths of a percent on a day where everything else is. Uh, uh, what can I say that won't get me thrown off the air? I'll, let me, I'll just, you, I'm going to put some quotes and say, insert your uh, scatological humor here. That's what I'll do. Okay, so what else is going on out here? Well, um, as we said, a uh, little bit of news, uh, I guess, and actually a statement from the Chinese that they are giving up a little bit more on trade talks. Uh, that kind of popped the market, then everybody decided it was the end of the world. We got to sell. Got back down to 2,800, and we've actually, let's take a look at this just so I don't tell you wrong, because every day is brand new. Um, so what was the low today? Yeah, we got below it. Uh, 2798.77 was the low. So so that puts us about 13 points off the lows on the S&P cash. Um, but the rest, um, kind of all quiet on the Western front. Uh, technology continues to be sold to raise cash to get into some of these newer IPOs, and that's why we continue to see, I think, the NASDAQ a little bit weaker uh, than you would think. Uh, Dow's kind of in line, but, you know, you had to kind of have all that money in this morning uh, to uh, wire transfer uh, this afternoon to get in on the IPO. So probably didn't have much other than the people that were really last minute going after it uh, that may be sold. Uh, but here are two, four, and after. You can't blame any of the selling here uh, on the IPO because that money had to be in. Uh, I continue to think that they will hold this market up at least until about 11 o'clock tomorrow. And, of course, then you go right into fund buying. And, again, it's problematic to be short this market. Um, until probably mid, at least Wednesday next week. So maybe things change, but right now, uh, given the conditions, I don't think that there's a lot of money to be made uh, in uh, being short the market eh, right now. Uh, not going to deny that the volume's been weak all the way back up. Just, you know, sometimes even in a horrible winter, you get that one day of sun, you get to go out there and have some fun, and look at the ice smell. And then, of course, the weather's going to go right back to crappy next week. But I think we've got a week of sunshiny weather in the middle of winter at a minimum. Now, maybe the weather turns better and we get an early spring. But I think it's going to take a handful of days to come out. I suspect that we do hit 2850, probably even maybe spike it by tomorrow. And we're always in the three to four days where we could run right back up uh, to the highs on any kind of trade deal. I don't think it would be uh, beyond the scope of reason. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to be doing a little bit of histoire. And then we'll go right into charts. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at pat at pfnn.com. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And my engineer, which I called and put me on hold. Do you have the Slack app up? I've been typing at you, no response. No response. So I have a feeling that maybe he's hidden under something else and hasn't been looking. But uh, hopefully Alan or one of the other guys is actually there and will answer my, uh, my instant message. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on to, to um, oh, got an email asking me about IPOs uh, and where to find out information on IPOs. And that's, uh, uh, okay. And, uh, to, to, well, I have a feeling you're in the wrong channel again, because uh, I'm going to you and you're there. Anyway, uh, back to Renaissance Capital. Um, they've got probably the best uh, calendar on what's upcoming. And give you a little idea, we had two IPOs today. You probably never heard of them. There are a couple of startups in the biotech field. We got a lot of them this year, but they're all you know 50 million, 100 million, that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, you know, well, IPO scoop too. Another one out there. Uh, well, he just keeps putting it in the den. Uh, I like this one, uh, Renaissance Capital. They've got uh, a little bit more sometimes than some of the others, but certainly a good calendar. Um, but uh, what you will see is the, the deal size here is basically about $2.2 billion. And that's what, from time to time, I know we have new listeners, I call a sliver deal, which is you have a company that's valued at $40 billion. Uh, but you're only putting out stock worth $2.2 billion. And what's the reason for that? Well, um, you want to get the price up on the available stock in the retail market. And as uh, that gets out there and the price gets established, you'll just continue to put more shares and more shares out there. That's generally a very bad thing uh, for long-term investors in the fact that you know that, well, if we've got $2 billion or 2.2 billion out of the 40 billion out there, you got 37.8 billion left to come at you. Uh, now they won't do it all in one uh, hitch, but those shares are, are are printed. They're sitting up there on the shelf. 
Anytime they want the cash, they'll just push out another 100,000, 500,000 shares, million shares, whatever they need uh, for their thing. And again, this is where you really have to look and worry about stocks uh, that have a lot of extra shares sitting on the shelf. I don't have no idea. The books are probably incomprehensible at this time on Lyft. Uh, everybody loves the company, <coughs> but the company is not the stock. And um, if you want a, there used to be a website that I loved called the Red Herring. It was all about IPOs. The thing was eh, maybe 20 years, nah, yeah, 20 years ago it kind of started, about 98. And it had all the dirty little secrets in there. It's no longer around, but it was a great website for that. There's a thing called <clears throat> uh, the red herring in IPO. I'm going to have to take a sip of <clears throat> There's a thing called a red herring, which is when you're doing an IPO, you kind of uh, put uh, kind of a uh, pie in the sky view of what's going on. And you kind of hand that around and see how many people salute. And uh, it gave you a lot of indication of what was going on early on and how it changed. If uh, you started off trying to sell $10 billion worth of shares, and then you just come in at $2 billion, well, that's one thing. Uh, but generally, the idea is when you're putting out such a small amount compared to the overall market cap, it generally means a couple of things. One, uh, the upside limitations on the stock are probably going to be there for a great deal of time because again you've got so many shares that haven't got a seat yet and it is kind of a musical chair business but watch for the limited upside on lift and any of these uh, stocks uh, or companies that come out in the IPO where they have such a small percentage of their shares up front it's almost always a huge red flag and there's a couple of reasons why people would go ahead and do it in a market that is a little weaker, and that is that they have more to come. Uh, when we get into next week, looking ahead, uh, there's a handful of other ones. They're all kind of small, but a few more weeks, maybe another three weeks, we've got more and bigger ones to come. The idea is probably to get this one out, juice it a bit. Make it all look good, even though there's only a handful of shares out there. Maybe even run it up to 100 bucks. Make everybody think that everything's beautiful. Everything is beautiful in its own way. I haven't heard that song in about 30 years, and I think I know why. Uh, anyway, they'll run it up, uh, get a lot of people not to sell it, get the price up, and then it's chum for what's gonna happen next. Maybe they'll throw one out there with $10 billion uh, dollars or everything, uh, or maybe even more uh, in the coming months. But there are a bunch of them out there coming. So just be warned. Yeah, yeah, we all did. So anyway, uh, got the guy. Okay, uh, oh, we got a little bit of history and then we'll go on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1939 in Spain, the Republican defenders of Madrid raised the white flag over the city, bringing an end to the bloody three-year civil, Spanish Civil War, a predecessor to World War II. 1931, Spanish King Alfonso XIII approved elections to decide the government of Spain and uh, voters overwhelmingly chose to abolish the monarchy in, famous, in favor of a liberal republic. Uh, communists invaded the country. And uh, mostly from uh, Stalin's boys. Uh, and, of course, uh, Hitler was more than happy uh, to give uh, a dress rehearsal uh, for what he was going to do in about 1939. Uh, and probably the best book about politics ever was written about this time. Uh, George Orwell, uh, who would write 1984, also wrote a book called Animal Farm. He was a, when he went there, a dyed-in-the-wool communist, thought that's exactly what everything it needed, went to Spain only to find out that uh, 
all the people cried about all the problems in Spain did nothing more than do the exact same when they rose to power. And that's why communists almost, no, almost, no. Communists have a 100% record of failure, whether it's uh, Cuba or Venezuela or the Soviet Union or everywhere else. Eventually, you run out of other people's money and everything crumbles. There's only one thing that communism is good at. That's the universal distribution of misery. Copy. Capitalism, so much better, but not perfect. And many people think communism is good because uh, capitalism is not perfect. Eh. <laughs> Be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And, oh, got to get my uh, charts back up here. Got uh, a couple of people asking uh, uh, to start looking at it thing. First question from Paul uh, is, uh, can we take... Another look at Roku again. Um, I'm not exactly sure why he wants to do that. Um, as long as it stays below the nine-day moving average, um, this thing's on a sell. And I always thought that this looked more like GoPro than any other uh, recent IPO. 
Uh, but uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Anyway, you're up on very light volume today. 6.5 million shares. You were down on 9.7. So see how the end of the day comes in. Uh, but uh, you basically just bouncing off the 13th of uh, March that had that huge down day at 30. 839 million shares. Jervis basing up on it. But as long as it stays below nine day, moving average, this thing's probably coming back down to 52 bucks. Now it's got a massive, I, I wouldn't be short it. Uh, this is going to be like a lot of other stocks. You're going to have to sit on it for a year or two to find out uh, that uh, it's a uh, house of cards. R O K U. Um, but yeah, I mean, you had 40% short interest on this uh, for uh, uh, two days ago, yesterday, 36%. So this thing's always massively shorted. Um, you got 11. It's actually come down, which is one of the reasons why it's probably uh, having some weakness. I mean, uh, on the, what was that, on the 31st of January, uh, for the bi-monthly data, you had 21% short interest on it. That's gotten down in the last reporting period to 11, about 11.6. And when you see the short interest drop in about half, almost always a good signal that the, the uh, shorts have quit shorting. And what does that mean? It means uh, without the shorts to hold it up, it's probably coming back down. And uh, you can see that in a variety of stocks. Uh, the big fall off in Tesla, uh, where it went from about 40% down to about 18% short uh, interest off about that 330, 340 level. Um, but when you see these massively overshorted stocks, the same thing. Uh, and generally, the big uh, runs like Apple, uh, we talked about it. Um, having, a, you know, going from one day to four days to cover and a big stock like that tells you about everything you're ready to know. And that is they're about ready to run all the shorts as soon as everybody gets shorts. Now, the stocks that come down the most are the ones where the shorts were too afraid to get in. Then the stock starts moving down. And then they <clears throat> hope that it bounces, so they can get short again. It never bounces that much, and it just continues to deteriorate. Normally, when everybody hops on board, it's almost a bottom. And uh, you can see that routinely in the way this uh, works. Uh, for those new to the show, when you're looking at the charts, the little black uh, candle, uh, things that look like a uh, matchstick down here, actually a reverse matchstick, would be black for the thing and, and red. Anyway, the little black parts, of those candles show how uh, much it's been shorted. And in the big days back here, uh, when this thing actually bounced on the 7th of January, had monster uh, short sell numbers in Roku. Let's go back to that, R-O-K-U. So what is that? That's the uh, first couple of days of January. Let me go back and see exactly what those numbers look like. Uh, two, 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 okay. Yeah, on the 7th of January, 40%. That's uh, That means four out of every 10 shares that day were shorted. Uh, and uh, those guys just continue to short. Every time it goes higher, you have a big amount of shorting. Didn't go it now. Um, you, you, basically, everybody kind of gives up, and it comes back down. But uh, again, uh, Roku, one of the more dangerous stocks, uh, now that it's kind of come off this high, and uh, short interest is still there. But uh, once everybody kind of gives up, look for it to come back, at least to support, which is going to be around $53 on that. Okay, what else do we have? Go to our email. Short uh, squeeze. Uh, what about the squeeze last for about three days? Okay. Uh, InBev reports earnings. If news is good, what would be the short squeeze look like? So let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, InBev. Huh. I don't know why this does not have. Hmm. 
Maybe fix that. Uh, what we've got was uh, of the last three days, 35% short on the 25th, 32% on the 26th, yesterday 24%. So it did kind of come off a little bit. Uh, for the monthly, you got four days to cover. That just means that uh, at the average volume, which is about, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say about 5 million shares a day, it would take four days if only the shorts decided to, to buy at that same 5 million shares a day to get them out. So generally, uh, of course, uh, the longs, if you do get a short squeeze started, are not uh, going to let you out easily. They're going to they're gonna get to you out there. What I did think was Tilray actually looked fairly good. Uh, and certainly New Age Beverages out here. Also, uh, I'm not a big fan of the genre, uh, but I have to say just looking at the charts out here, doesn't look bad. And yes, if you have some kind of surprise or announcement or buy back in this, a $5 stock, uh, could it be seven bucks in the morning uh, with this big a short interest? I don't think that there's any problem with it doing that. Uh, but uh, again, uh, if you wanted to be short, you had your opportunity, but it should, it should have been Tilray, uh, not a fan of shorting stocks below $30. Uh, to, 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 okay. Hey, no one's going to take me up on my offer. Someone asked me to fix something. I said I'd fix it for 50 bucks. Seems cheap to me. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Okay, so we're still up five points on the S&P cash. And let's update this just to make sure that I haven't lost anything. Uh, NASDAQ's up 13, Dow's up 48, Russell's up nine. And again, uh, got that Russell running away uh, with the market uh, issue. Now let's take a look at this. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to check on a few things. If you've got any questions, give me a call at 877-927-6648. I think I answered all those questions. Yes, uh, InBev on big uh, selling, or on a, a, a good earnings call, uh, you probably want to hang on to it for three days until all those shorts have given up. And uh, that's generally on the first pop, you get about three days. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And let's see. Uh, hang on just a second. I'm going to email somebody something. And uh, that's it. Took 15 seconds to look it up. Really? Okay. What else do we have? Eh, this kind of a quiet day. Uh, continue to take a look at volume. Let me get this. I'm going to move a few things around here. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Still very quiet, 4 uh, billion shares on the uh, consolidated tape. You know, we did a couple of days, a uh, couple of Fridays, we got really close into the 10 billion share days. Not much going on, just very, very quiet. Uh, gold off 20 bucks, if you didn't see it earlier. Uh, crude still holding at about 59. Let's take a look at the OIH real quick. Uh, as we said, this is the strongest. Uh, well, there's two times a year that are the strongest for crude and oil, and that's because most of the rigs are shut down as they uh, overhaul, especially the refiners, uh, go for the winter and summer change in the gasoline mixture. Although I don't think it actually makes a hill of beans worth of difference. Most scientists don't think it does either. Uh, and, you know, you got just kind of up here, high end of highs. But of course, as soon as you get uh, a lot of these wells turned back on, that will be turned back on here in about seven to 10 days, uh, you get a flood back into the market of crude. And uh, so you got about another week or so. Natural gas, of course, um, probably not gonna do much until the dog days of August. And that means about August 15th seasonally, you're done for in natural gas unless something drastically changed, which I do not think it's going to happen. Okay, uh, to, to, what else do we have? I wanted to look at a handful of other ones. Let's go ahead and start this. We've got plenty of time left today. Yeah, uh, someone wanted me to look at cars, cars.com. I, I don't think any of these things are going to be doing uh, well, and this one's probably coming back to twenty dollars and fourteen cents. So I don't think there's a lot in that. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, this FBIO. I was looking at it a while ago. Uh, actually, uh, had a nice gap higher on the thirty-first of January, about nine point six million shares. Got into it with four hundred seventeen thousand shares, and now. Back at support with about 155, uh, yeah, 156,000 shares today. Uh, this is Fortress Bio, uh, Biotech. Don't know a lot about it, but uh, certainly it did have a nice bounce. And if you're looking to play the pennies in the biotechs, uh, yep, getting looking for a lottery ticket. Uh, doesn't look like there are many better than that. Got a quick uh, call in here to take a look at the GDX and you know you didn't have a lot of juice on the way back up you got back into the previous high that had 30 excuse me 62 million shares 
And it wasn't all that bad. You had 58 million shares uh, back on the 25th. So you got into the high. It was just a little light. I mean, not that bad. Uh, and then gave it all up today. Uh, but again, eh, gold is like that, isn't it? It's the treasure of the Sierra Madre. It's just there to break your heart. Harmony, H-M-Y-N-O. Helio and Matheson, it's, just, uh, it's still in business. I am surprised. H-S-Y, the Hershey Company. Uh, it's broken out, but without a sign of strength, looks fairly weak. I don't see anything going on in that one. Let's see what out here. Uh, LTHM, which is live in. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything else out here. Uh, spot. Take a look at Spotify. Of course. Uh, yeah, Spotify. I still don't um, see much in the way of uh, this stock, but again, I think this thing's just going to be held up for a while and sold into. Um, again, I, bizarre IPO, the way it came out, uh, has a little bit of that smell. Uh, ooh, that smell? Is it? Who sings that? Leonard Skinner? Ooh, that smell. The smell that gets around you. Uh, what about cocaine, wasn't it? I think that's what it was about. Uh, USG, let's take a quick look at that one. Um, and it's just not going to change much here. Let's go back to some of the other big names real quick. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's still holding up. Up uh, five points on the S&P cash. Amazon, eh, not much happening except very light volume. Yesterday, he did 4.3 million shares, just 2.3 million shares. So a very light volume day. We'll see if we get the same in many of the others of the big leadership of the Fang brothers. Microsoft yesterday had 22.7 million shares. Today, just 12.5 so far. So again, we did push down a little bit, didn't get quite into that low uh, of yesterday, but certainly the volume isn't there. Taking a look at some other ones, ADBE. Adobe's been hanging up at these highs, had a big gap down on earnings, finally got back up to uh, the uh, level it was pre-earnings on the 20, what was that, the 20, uh, no, the 14th. Uh, gap down, didn't gap down that far, came back up, Yesterday on that one, you had 2.5 million shares, just 1.2 million shares now. So again, uh, just very tough to see any of these uh, doing much. Let's take a look at some of the ETFs. We'll bounce over to those real quick. Uh, semiconductors uh, actually could be looking fairly bullish today. You only have 5.6 million shares going into an 8.4 million share gap up on the 15th. So at least in the short term, you've got this pulling back with wider volume and into the gap. If you were willing to uh, take a flyer on this, um, you just want to probably look at today's low as a stop, which is 103.99. Uh, We've been watching the biotechs, but so many of them look like they had something that they may be showing. Um, just light volume down on that, too. So don't see anything there. Yesterday, you were down on 3.3 million shares. Today, so far, 1.5 million shares. So certainly, if you were looking for a lot of volume to come in the market, you're not getting it today. Stamps.com got destroyed. I don't know if there's anything in it other than what they've done before. Uh, certainly... Uh, down on 13.6 million shares on the 22nd of February. Uh, today, just 448,000 shares. So, uh, doesn't matter, good, bad, and the ugly. All have one thing in common today. That's light volume. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, the brains of the organization has decided to come and break in to the, uh, the uh, studio today. This is uh, Mr. El Diablo. And for some whatever reason, he's all upset about something, but I can't tell what it is. But, uh, yep, there's the brains of the organization. But uh, eh, pretty nice little pup. Now, go play. Oh. What else do we have going on out here today? Well, Twitter, uh, pretty light going on, um, volume and the question on this one uh, that I got from, who is this, John? John, uh, is uh, what, you know, you gap down uh, on the 7th of February, you got back into this. I tell you what, this continues to have more and more bad news surrounding it and its long-term viability. I really dislike the CEO, um, not from a financial standpoint, but from a decision making standpoint, he continues uh, to take what probably should be a free speech platform and destroy it. Um, word out that he went after people who didn't have hate speech or all the other easy things. Um, Elon Musk posted something about um, his driver uh, driverless cars and how proud he was. One guy put a spreadsheet up of all the people that died in the car 
uh, in a tweet, and they ran, they basically revoked his account. So we we have something that probably is broken, uh, but not broken on the consumer side, broken on the management side, and that is that they've risen to a level where they can't help but molest free speech anywhere they think that uh, someone is doing something they don't quite like, and that is always a problem. Um, very tough on Twitter. Uh, just from a management, they're going to have to come up with some way of uh, calling balls and strikes. Isn't we're going to be back tomorrow? Same bat channel, same bat time. So when you can, not when you have. To.